It's like they're trying to be too meta. You're gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can yeah. buy you a drink. You can. But, uh, well, you well, I mean, he did pick up somebody we know. We well, sidestepped the question. That you technology does not exist. Hey everybody, you're listening to A2Z episode 21. Today's guest is Jacob Smith, owner of Black Cadillac Tattoo Parlor. Hey you guys, what's up? I'm Aaron, I'm here with my co-host Zach. Hey, hey. Welcome to A to Z. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. A to Z is produced sort of weekly and show notes can be found at a to z podcast.com. If you like what you hear, feel free to hit subscribe on iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast fix. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at A to Z BMT where you can find updated clips, extra content, and just a bunch of goodies. Bunch of goodies. So this is a good old episode with Mr. Jacob Smith. Of, uh, of uh, you know, of tattoo work and, or I should, I should say, tattoos, like tattoos, I say yeah. many times in the episode. Yeah, so he, he owns Black Cadillac Tattoo Parlor, but he's also a tattoo artist, and uh, we brought him on to talk about a lot of different things, but we got off into a lot of different things, as usual. As usual. We usually, will bring on a friend of ours or just a random acquaintance or somebody, and, and we would think the episode would go a certain way just based on the surface level of their character, but... As always, we end up going like off the beaten track, and we talked about a lot of stuff in this. We talked about motivation, uh, business ownership. We mm-hmm. talked about personal and financial responsibility. Yeah, toxic expectations within the tattoo industry. Yeah, all so he kinds gets into of stuff. The pet peeve thing that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, so if if you know you're kind of interested in in tattoo culture, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, if you're interested in just personal responsibility, or even like, I don't know, fashion, he's a pretty snappy dresser. Yeah, you know, this might be the episode for you. Yeah. And uh, we also going to take a little moment to announce we have a few things coming out of the pipe. We have a little small studio space we're moving into. Hell yeah. In a couple of days, we've been working on it for like a month. We've been going back and forth with the lease owner, but that looks like that's going to come out. And it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great way for us to up here a little like a little more professional probably get some some higher caliber guests not that any of our guests have been not high caliber but it, it make them feel a little more comfortable and us look a little more on the level so we're super excited about that yeah it kind of opens up some more opportunities for us to do all kinds of different things um also another thing we're going to be trying to do uh, in accordance to that is we're going to try to do some kind of Patreon thing uh, just so we can, if anybody wants to help out, they can. We don't really, we're not looking to make a living off of this thing, but no. we definitely uh, would love to have some some uh, extra funding. We honestly just want to break even, to be, yeah. you know, to be honest. <laughs> we, we don't do this for the money. We do it for uh, the love of it, the experience of it, and honestly for other selfish reasons besides monetarily. But yeah. whenever that comes out, it's probably going to come out uh, around like the 25th episode, we're thinking about doing a launch party, and we'll we'll do a, a Patreon launch party too. So, if that's something that you might be interested in, look for that in the future. Look and if you future. give like a dollar five, that would be great. Yeah, and if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, leave some reviews and comments. Yeah, uh, we, we want to hear, hear what you got to say. And then also, uh, this episode is going to be featuring tracks by our good buddy Mr. Silas Feemster. Yeah, so yeah. So thank you for that, Mr. Silas Feemster. And, yeah, we, uh, we bought we bought the tracks on Bandcamp, which you can do yourself. Yeah, you can buy them on Go Bandcamp. I don't know ex- the exact link, but we'll put we'll put some kind of link or something in the uh, in the show notes for this. So if you like that, go check him out and uh, enjoy this episode with Mister Jacob Smith. Everybody, welcome to A to Z. You know, <laughs> I'm doing my intro right now. Not nah, uh, today's guest is 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 Jacob from Black Cadillac Tattoo. Up, up, Jacob up, Smith, Jacob owner, Smith, owner, proprietor, entrepreneur, proprietor. jack of all trades. Jack, yeah, Jacob of all trades. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a really interesting guy. That's why we got him on here, and we'll, we'll slightly. We're, 
Well, no, you are. You're interesting in, in a lot of ways. You're very multifaceted, yeah, right. and Psychology. that's kind of that's kind of something. And we're not trying to suck your dick here, but but that's like kind of a, a running theme is everybody that we have on is kind of a multifaceted person, and and they usually talk to people about whatever they're about on the surface. Like with you, people. They they relate to you as like the tattoo guy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But and we'll talk a little bit about that. But but we like to have people on here and kind of talk about some of the some of the the deep cuts, you know, some of the, some of the other stuff that's very relatable to everybody else. The under the surface stuff. Yeah. Well, it's not even just yeah. as relatable, but it's um, parts of character, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's there's more. Oh, y'all are in for a treat, then. Well, yeah, totally. Well, I mean, that's if y'all want to get into character. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's uh, we, you know, like we have on musicians, but we didn't want to have on musicians and talk about music and talk about all these things. Yeah. You know, we wanted, to, you know, it, it, have on a musician, but they have something else behind it. Right. right and that's kind right. of like what you, I mean, you do tattoos, but you, you also have some other things that I guess we'll, we'll get into. But mm-hmm. so, so you, uh, owner, owner Black Cadillac, uh, how long has that been going now? Uh, this August will be three years that it's been open. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And before that, you were at Santa Fe. You're, Santa Fe. You pretty much. There. You pretty much ran Santa Fe, right? Because the the owner lived in Alaska yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he ran into some managerial problems the second year that I was with him, and then he basically just told me like, "If you don't manage the shop, then I'm closing it down." Mm. <laughs> yeah. So you had to step up for everybody. I had to, so I could keep it going. And then at the same time, the type of person that I am, I was looking at it as in, I can learn everything I need to learn. By running the shop when I do decide to open my own shop. Did you want to open a shop before you got that position? Or Every tattoo artist's dream is to open his, own his own yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And mine was 10 years. I'm not going to open a shop until after I've been tattooing for 10 years. Yeah. Hmm. But then another opportunity presented itself, and I had to do what I had to do. So, so how long have you been tattooing for? Uh, it'll be eight years in October. Halloween will be eight years. Oh no! So you started your first your first day was on Halloween. First day was on Halloween. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, how many how many spooky ghosts and stuff did you do? None. <laughs> I still haven't done a ghost. I don't think. I haven't done a ghost. No. What's your specialty? My specialty? I don't know. I mean, I love doing color stuff. Yeah. yeah. I try to mix color. like graffiti and some realism and just my own kind of weird style. I'm still trying to figure it out. You well, know? yeah. It's been it's, eight years, but. I do black and gray for a couple of months. That's what people want. And then yeah. they'll come back and they'll be like, well, do something you want to do. Or here's this idea. You take it and do that. The tattooing world is, is very uh, reliant on trends, too. Very. And and it can be, like, good or bad. I'm sure you get, like, a lot of people coming in trying to show you things off Pinterest. <sighs> hey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, um, I want this infinity symbol that turns into a dotted line right here, and, and then the then dotted turns line turns into a, a dandelion being blown off, and then the dandelion seeds turn into seagulls. And then in the seagulls, I need a name with a date. Yeah. And because it's my love. own, and so nobody else can have it. And the <laughs> yeah. thing about Pinterest tattoos, like, there's nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them. Sure. You know, everybody has what they want, or they, they get what they want, but it's what pays the bills. Yeah. yeah, no, there's there's nothing You're wrong not, with that. I mean, but. Any kind of artistic endeavor, which I'd say tattooing is definitely an artistic endeavor. Mm-hmm. It's you're you're not gonna make money off the things that you like doing. No, it's yeah. it's the uh, it's the the bullshit. That the comes grind. In yeah, the grind. Yeah, and it's kind of like a double edged sword because you have to you have to do that. And I, I'm learning this more and more and more that I that that I'm in it. You have to do that stuff to be able to do what you want to do at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. To pay you know, bills, period. You that's, have to that's do with any business, really. Six, eight yeah. months of grinding is what mm-hmm. we'll call it to do that one tattoo that you can sit down and, like you said, you know, usually you don't even charge half of what you'd normally charge just because of the fact that somebody is actually letting you do what you want to do. Right. You, you personally, not they come in and say, "Here, this is what I want." Yeah. Put what your touches on it. Yeah. Right. But I want this exact that, thing. Well, see, yeah. that's that's why I didn't pursue uh, studio work. I went to live sound for audio mm-hmm. just because if, if you can even afford to have the studio or a place to work, uh, all your all your income is going to be off of somebody coming in, somebody's kid coming in and doing like a four-song EP. Rebecca and just, Black. And, and dealing, Friday. Well, no, no, that's lucky, I guess. But no, I mean, you, you're dealing, you have to hash out all this bullshit that you don't want to do. But... Whenever you get to work with a band that you want to work with, you're probably not going to charge them. Right. So you're not making any money off the bands that you want to work <laughs> yeah, with. Yeah, you have, cost, you have, your, you have you know? your passions. You have your passions, passion and then you have projects, your paying yeah. the bills. Yeah. Just like anything. But an endless sloth of just like 
shit that brain uh, numbing, yeah, zombified one after another after yeah. another after another after another. But it's like you get you get brought up an infinity symbol, and you know you're gonna be sitting there for an hour. Depending on how big it is, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> shit, we've done so many of them. It's like okay, <laughs> all right, you got eighty bucks. <laughs> it's on your wrist. That's a hundred. Wrist is a hundred. What? Yeah. This is hard wrist, to... wrist, feet, fingers, necks, face. All started at a hundred dollars at our shop. Face. Face. Yeah. It all starts at. Is it because it's more sensitive area? Or no. Takes well, longer? the face is. It's kind of one of those commitment things. Like, we're gonna, <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> we're gonna make sure. Like, if you're willing to pay a hundred dollars for yeah. a little thing on your face, then you're gonna get this thing, whether you get it here or somewhere else. Yeah. And right. So we would rather be the ones doing it. Yeah. Um, fingers, hands. Next, all that stuff, wrist, ankles, all that stuff tends to fade mm. just because any any kind of skin that moves around, it chips out, it fades during the healing process. So instead of paying $60 twice to get it touched up because we don't guarantee those spots, we charge you $100 and you get free touch-ups for life. Right. Oh, no on shit. those spots, yeah. No shit. So if you get a if you get a, if you get a tattoo on any of those wear away places at Black Cadillac, you get touch ups for life. If you pay the hundred bucks, that's cool. So I'm trying to keep people saving them a little bit extra money yeah. for those spots, and they have the option of paying sixty dollars. But right. I tell them like, if it fades, you come back. Those are the spots we won't touch up for free if you don't pay. People this. usually understand, but I think I've do. I've heard you doing that spill one time. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, okay. Oh, no, I could do, you totally went to a salesman kind of Yeah, you have to, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, we dealt with it uh, last night. Well, that's night. the other side of doing something as a career is you have to kind of, you have to be professional. Mm-hmm. You have to become more, uh, you can't just be an artist, man. Oh, know? no, no. And it, being the owner, you really mm-hmm. have to. That's mm-hmm. what we came yeah. across yesterday. Uh, these two girls wanted tattoos on the backs of their necks. And it was like $100 a piece. And they started throwing this big fit. And, like, try to storm out. So I'm in the middle of a tattoo, and I get up, and I'm like, I walk out, I'm like, look, let me explain this to you. If you do this, you can pay $60 a piece. I know it's a small tattoo, but if it fades, chips, cracks, and you need to touch up, you're going to have to pay another $60. Yeah. That's where that other 40 And it's more likely that is going to happen. Right. Right. And so they understood, and then finally I could pull them back in, and they only wanted to spend the 60 a piece, which is fine. So if they come back, I'm like, oh, it's well, and maybe maybe five or six years ago, you've probably been well, fucked. Yes, I bet they did. Because yeah. that because I mean, not any. I I have a lot of tattoo artist friends, but uh, there there it's not that there's a stigma, but there is some kind of like this. There's kind of like an expectation, and it's not so much now of people walking into tattoo parlors, and you know, it's kind of it's kind of not an easy situation to deal with. It's kind of like they're kind of weirded out by it. You know, it's what intimidating. I love? I yes, it. you know what I love is the. I got a friend who would do it cheaper memes. <laughs> oh my god, bro! You know what I'm Tell talking my about. Kitchen. <laughs> I got a friend who would do it cheaper, and then it's just the worst tattoos you'll ever see in your whole life. And it, those people go to a house, you know. And I say those people. Sure. I don't mean to. They call them scratchers, right? Yeah, yeah. scratchers, scratchers. Jesus, and what's Beaumont's becoming full of them as well, like high school scratchers. No shit. Well, you see, you see, uh, t- every time you go to a pawn shop, you'll see two or three tattoo guns. Mm-hmm. Or tattoo machines. Yeah. Tattoo machines. Hmm. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see several every time you walk in. So kids mm-hmm. are going and buying these things. Oh and yeah. Tattooing their friends in high school, going over and all that stuff. I'm like, bro, you practice on a grapefruit or something? I ain't letting <laughs> you tattoo me, man. <laughs> and then with us, we have seven, sixteen, seventeen year old people coming in wanting to get tattooed, and we're like, you got to be eighteen. Gotta well, be my 18, friend yeah. got a tattoo. Well, they didn't get it here. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, they got it at somebody's house. That's not that has job. fucking nothing, nothing to do with to me. Do with us. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, I mean, you can go and do that and get an infection, or you can just wait a couple years and come yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Easily. Well, not even the infection, but just the, the quality I mean, of work. The quality yeah. of work. Yeah. That shit's going to bleed out or whatever. I don't know. Just, I don't know much they don't know the it. proper techniques. They think they know everything. And that's what's so weird about tattooing is it looks so simple, but if you break it down, everything. It does look very simple. Has a purpose. It looks yeah, like if people. If, if you're just a guy, I don't think it looks simple. I, I think Weird. I think it does. Like if you're just a dude who has no idea, and, and you, you walk in, you see somebody, tattooing. you see him, you know, put the paper, do the placement on on your. Oh skin. man, they're just tracing, they're filling. Just, the numbers, they're like, hey, man. they look like tracers. That, that looks exactly. all right. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
But I mean, there's a lot of factors. There's like skin porosity that you have to worry about. The, the, the type of, of skin. skin yeah. The, yeah. Where the skin is, the way the skin's moving, the way the skin grows. Do they have like charts, like like educational charts in the back where no. you can see different types of skin. That's what, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's a learning process. I mean, there's not any college tattooing yeah. classes. No. Like Tattoo- you have, it's an apprenticeship. Yeah, thing. that's mm-hmm. that's one thing about tattooing is like tattooing. Tattooing. I like saying like that. Tattooing is tattooing. Yeah. You know, it's it's so. It's so old school, man. It's there's not a lot of things. It's it's, that's it's apprenticeships. Still, it's, and, it was rooted mm-hmm. in. Yeah. I mean, what's the history of tattooing? It's rooted in uh, not. I'm not saying anything about a criminal element, but it's it's just rooted in kind of like a. Well, there's uh, there's like, like a, neolithic you're, tattoos. You're making and, do with materials, and you're doing this kind of. I don't know what the, what the way to put it, but it's it's never been like a formal thing, and because of what it was rooted in in the past, where it was you know just it was something that. I guess shady characters did sailors and sailors, sailors and, and whores, man. Yeah, sailors. <laughs> That's what it was. And yeah. it's like, the, and they had to learn all these techniques doing that. And then now it's just now it's it's becoming a lot more common, obviously. Like. Oh yeah. Well, especially in Beaumont, I was thinking about it the other day, man. When I first started eight years ago, I couldn't go anywhere and see one person with a visible tattoo. Huh. Eight years ago. Nowadays, I can walk around Beaumont and sleeves all over, sleeves all Bro, over it's, the place. It's so strange. It's like now people, when they walk into a tattoo shop, I'm going to keep saying it like that because I like it. Whenever they walk into, they open one called or something. Whenever they walk into a shop, a lot of people's like first tattoos, like on the back of their hand or a neck tattoo. And you're like, and it used to be the first tattoos on your shoulder, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or... Or, or right here on your, on your chest, somewhere non-visible, back. so grandma doesn't see it. You know, there was yeah, yeah. it was a lot more stigmatized back in the day. And now, people no, that's their first tattoo is like forearm. forearm. Well, you've yeah. only been forearm. doing it eight years. Have you seen a, a major shift in like the acceptance of tattoos, even in that amount of time? In Beaumont, yeah. In Beaumont, yeah. I'll tell you a story. When I was uh, when Santa Fe was over on Calder mm-hmm. and Lucas, mm-hmm. do you remember when they were redoing that road? Yeah, we we lived right there at that time. Okay. Yeah, we, we lived right across the right. street. Yeah, that's right. We didn't have an entrance to the shop for eight months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only way you could get to the I shop, I remember that time, was if yeah. you parked behind it and you walked around in that subdivision. So, I'd been tattooing for three years at that time. So I had nothing. Had no. I didn't have walk-ins. We didn't have walk-ins. You know what I'm saying? So I would go like one one tattoo for a week and a half. God dang, man. Ugh. Yeah. And so I was like, well, I got to go find Starving another artist. job. Yeah, yeah I got to find something. So I went to uh, Kroger back there mm-hmm. in the back behind us. Applied for a Night Stalker. Wow. This was six years ago? So five years ago as a, for a Night Stalker just to stock the shelves. Guy looks at me, says, you got tattoos on your fingers. I can't hire you. <laughs> I said, excuse for me? For a Night Stalker. For a Night Stalker. I said, I get off at, at midnight. I can be here at... Twelve ten. Now, if it was a night stalker, that might yeah, be night stalker. Be. I, I probably would have got the job. Yeah. Huh? But now, you know, yeah, yeah, you can go anywhere, you can go into restaurants. You know, people, I see people with visible tattoos, hand tattoos all the time. And just in the last five years, it's it's gotten that more acceptable. But I'm well, still now a firm it's, now believer. Now it's become like exotic and like attractive. And mm-hmm. like- Oh yeah, it's yeah. hip. I guess it's hip. Yeah, <laughs> well, very hip. It, yeah, and there's a lot of things going on now that that makes it that way. There's some positives and some negatives, you know, like uh, a chaotic, uh, like a chaotic, political like mumble, landscape. like mumble rap culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're all tatted. Well, they just, they just. How many? How many? Those dudes has just the, like has the number of facial tats picked up uh, since '69 uh, or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Excuse me, sir. It's it's facial tattoos. Tattoos. It's tattoos. 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 It's it's it has picked up, especially for Beaumont. Like, and by us in Beaumont. If we do one a month, it's a whole lot more than three or five years ago. Yeah, you yeah. do. You one don't even year. do one a year. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so it's starting to but get my to wild the point, son. huh? But my wild son. I know, right? We're starting to catch up with everybody else. <laughs> yeah. But it has picked up. It it definitely has. And you know, we try to stay stray away from. If you're like you're covered, I get it. You want another tattoo, that's where you need to go. Mm-hmm. If you don't have any visible tattoos and you want to put a, a name on your eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you might want to bring start it to the back and be like, hey. Um, <laughs> and I've had to do that. You before. do that? Oh, yeah. That's good. Absolutely. I mean, that's that, 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 I think that's, that reflects like integrity in a way. And I've tried to explain to them, like, you're I, not trying to just make their money. No, yeah. no absolutely not. 
You know, that's some people treat it like a race that, you know, their body is a canvas and they uh want to fill it up as quick as possible. And that's, that's the first priority. I'm going to get a a dolphin here. I'm going to get, and then it's, I'm not really saying there's anything wrong with that, but I think that if you put your priority for quality of work, you know, and, and instead of speed or just coverage, I think you'll get a lot better. Uh, you'll get a lot better pieces. No, absolutely. And that that's and the most people that are like that, they want to just get covered. Yeah. They're the ones that are gonna go to scratchers because they want to oh, get right. as much as possible and pay forty dollars, eighty dollars, you know, for five or six hours. Yeah. And then you see it and it's like, okay, you have one tattoo here on your forearm and you have one tattoo on the top of your arm and the rest is nothing but clouds. <laughs> oh, sure. You know sure. what it's like? Yeah. I got a sleeve. No, you don't have a sleeve. You have two tattoos and a bunch of clouds. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a sleeve. It might look full, but that is not a sleeve. <laughs> and then, of course, they want to get offended and all that. And so, uh, whatever. Yeah. It's, well, I, was, uh, we, I saw you last night and I was talking to you about, about what we talk about. And <laughs> I brought up is like, we're not, we don't want like to bring you on and bother you about talking about tattoos, but I always enjoyed getting into like your, your, uh, the shop talk, I guess, the rants about what you have to deal with. I think it's pretty. I think, oh, I think yeah. a lot. I think a lot of like people probably peeves. benefit from hearing. Yeah, it. <sighs> I think so. Yeah, well, yeah. you got some pet peeves. You got a list. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know space. if we have enough time for yeah. my pet peeves. Oh, we personally. got a little bit of time. Come on. Um, let me see. <laughs> Where do I begin? You starting to turn red. Man. The uh, yeah, because I'm starting to get frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about peeves. it. I'm starting. Oh, to, yeah. My blood pressure is going up. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Uh, people that come in and they, they want something, Respect they want to throw the world. a fit. The, the, people have toxic expectations. Uh, well, it's just this sense of entitlement that, that people are starting to get in, get nowadays, and not just in my industry, but, I mean, I see it all over the place. But yeah. me, personally, when I have to deal with it is, you know, we are in the service industry, even though a lot of people don't think that we are, but as popular as tattooing is becoming, people are still having that same mentality. Like, mm. You're gonna do it the way that I want it, how I Customers want it. Customers oh, always sure. right, sure. Yeah, and they are yeah. until you they're wrong, and you try to explain it to them, and then they're not wrong. Well, like Aaron said, toxic toxic expectations mm-hmm. is kind of it. Mm-hmm. Is absolutely biggest pet peeve. Don't do not tell me how to do my job. <laughs> don't don't tell me. Well, you can do it for the you can do it this way for this much. No, I can do it my way for as much as I want to charge you, and I'm not going to do it any other way. Yeah. But once again, you're in that situation to where you can't be a complete dickhead, which I'm yeah, very yeah. good at being. So, I well, have I mean, to kinda... does that that problem's no probably no different from any but other business owners. I mean, really, realistically, true. A restaurant or, or uh, I don't know. It, the, I mean, it is a little different. It is a little different. We, mm-hmm. I mean, you're 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 providing a service, but it's not like it's a uh, a finite, I guess. service, yeah. I guess you could say like it has a value. Mm-hmm. Uh, more of a personal value to it. I really hope. I really hope that everyone in every sector of the service industry starts telling people that they can fuck off. I, I would really, like, do. I would love that. Yeah, because it's not. I mean, not not in a mean way. It's just it, there's a point, and once you cross that point, then you know. Yeah, well, these are the facts. Shut them down. Well, that's that's a good thing about being a tattoo artist because at the end of the day, yeah, like I said earlier, like, enough, yeah, I'm gonna tell you. To five, fuck like off. I said, five right, years right. ago, you told those girls to go get fucked. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, then I, I, and you can. Oh, absolutely. I mean, not, eventually, there, it's a, a, a scale. You can. Yeah, there's, yeah, a, there's a line yeah, that you cross. Yeah. But as the owner, that's kind of one of the things that I'm in a position. It's like, oh, the owner told me to fuck off because of this. Yeah, you know, and, and that's why like, you have a sterling reputation. Yeah, but you probably still had that happen though, and you didn't do oh, anything of the sort. I didn't even. But say it's anything. the same people that you're having a problem with in your first, in your pet peeve. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it's just people who don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Basically, and that 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 baffles me that that somebody would could walk in. And have an attitude like that when you're talking to a person that's about to put a permanent mark permanent on your mark, body, yeah. like, yeah. like why, why are you pissing this person off? Why They'll draw a penis. With, with some, They'll draw a penis on you, man. Mark you, like somebody's about to put you under the gun. Yeah, oh, gonna, oh, you want to? Oh, you want a, a two by two back piece, and you want to haggle with me? Let me mm-hmm. see if I can hide a penis in there somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> We're not gonna get on that subject. Yeah, they don't do, they don't do that at Black Cadillac. Not it's at all. Important. Second pet peeve: feet. If you're getting your feet tattooed, Wash those clean those motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> really? They're fucking socks. Really? Dude, you Jesus. don't understand. It's like wow. They just got off of work in the plants. They pull off their fucking boots so they didn't wear any the socks. The dudes with. aren't that bad. Oh, yeah. It's the windows. fucking girls, man. I've had some hot girls come in there with some stink-ass feet. 
<laughs> and I, you know, you're tattooing them. You have to be like six inches away from their yeah. feet. You know, eight inches, twelve inches, however close you, you are. Ever you ever stopped? Tattooed. You ever stopped before you got started and say, "Go back in the bathroom and wash some shits"? No, I've I've got it down to kind of a science. Uh, put on a contract. I'll put them, get them up there, start. I mean, to clean the, the area, to wash it yeah. all first, and I'll take uh, rubbing alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've actually had a girl tell me this. And so I'll take rubbing alcohol and start cleaning the top of her foot like I'm about to apply the stencil, you know, and start cleaning it. And usually if they take one shoe off, they're going to take stank? the other. Was she stank? Oh, the feet stunk. Oh, like yeah. fucking cheese and garbage. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, it was, like in sandals, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wiping, and I'm wiping the bottom of her foot down, and she's kind of like, why are you, like, looking at me? So yeah. then I grabbed her other foot, and I started rubbing it down with alcohol. And she was like, I thought I was getting tattooed on the other foot. I was like, you are. She was like, well, why are you rubbing both of my feet down with alcohol. Should you get creeped out or something? And I was like, because both of your feet are on the, the, the table, uh, so they have to be sterile. And in the yeah. back of my head, I'm like, because your fucking feet stink. That's a good one. I like that. I have that. to be down. Sterile. Yeah. Sterile's good. Yeah. 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 And I have to be six inches away from smelling your fucking old cheese feet. You haven't ever been cut by a toenail, have you? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> you say cut by a toenail? Yeah. I have been. There's yeah, been, that's... I've seen some that <laughs> have mean, curled over. Have. Oh, they're, I don't, Feet, really? One of the pet peeves, man. And hmm. I don't have a problem with feet. I don't, don't touch me with them, but you know, just make sure they don't stink. How do you not clean your feet if you know you're getting a foot tattoo? Well, a lot of <clears throat> not to not to harp on it, but but a lot of women wear shoes without socks yeah. a lot. Yeah. You know, so them things be stinking, dude. And I get the sandals like during the summertime. Sandals, no socks. They're leather. I I get it. Yeah. But like. Don't wear your Converse or your Chucks up your there vans, with no shots. Oh, you know what you need to do? Four fucking days. Get a, get the get the uh, get the, the the minnow tank. Oh, that the, you sit in the chairs and, and oh yeah, the little the little you, Japanese you know, you get a foot goldfish. Tattoo, you get, yeah. to get them treated with minnows. For Those are like special koi, I think that I don't, I don't that care. they. They, they're like a pedicure. It's I don't really care expensive. if you put fucking. Uh, I'll go get some put, fucking put Oscars in there. <laughs> uh, some put some Oscars in there. Yeah, some yeah. little baby catfish. What, like, like, oh my god, what is this? You're like, don't worry, it's a new thing we're doing. It's, it's free. <laughs> it's, it's free. You get a it's complimentary. Yeah, you get a little fish petty mm-hmm. while while you get while you get blasted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to do you want to do a third third pet peeve? Third pet peeve? Talking about it at the bar? Third pet? No, that's that's <laughs> we're gonna get into that's, that's, that's off record. Peeve. That's, yeah, that's that's just an irritation. <laughs> uh, if you're getting a tattoo on your back, and you're a girl, wear a shirt. And if you're uncomfortable of taking your shirt off, wear a shirt that I can get to the spot that I'm tattooed. Like a big scoop neck or something. Scoop yeah. neck, yeah. A spaghetti strap or something. Because the one thing I hate is having to hold. The back of a shirt down and try to tape it down and try to tattoo because you're so uncomfortable with taking your shirt off, which is fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. But don't make me work five times as hard because you decided not to be prepared for your tattoo. And I guess that's <laughs> in general, that's what it all comes down to. Just be prepared for your tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. You ever thought about giving like a handout? <laughs> a little card says well, this. Is no, what you I mean, need it's not. I mean, you, you know, it's part, part of being a business is like these are thank, do's and don'ts. Like you have one for feet, one for this, one for that, you know? It wouldn't be that hard to put together. It wouldn't. I it, mean, I, I could, and it's probably not a bad idea. I'll probably get Jeremy to get on that. <laughs> from a uh, from an outsider looking in, because you know we're friends. I, I see you and being over the the, the jujitsu studio a lot. Yeah. I see I see you guys there all the time, and I talk to you so often. And it kind of it perturbs me a little bit to to notice you and see your level of professionalism. And perturbs you? Well, no, this well, I'm, I'm, you didn't let me finish. Oh, my one thing that perturbs me is uh, to see you in your level of professionalism, to see uh, uh, the quality of your studio, right? It's a nice studio, it's a, a ground wide up, open and it's, clean. it's really good, everything's super clean. It's not like a, a mixed it looks studio, like a barbershop, you know yes. what I mean? You gotta set up like a barbershop, and then and we'll, we'll have links to, to your website. Oh, yeah, for sure, people can check it out. Okay, cool, cool. So, but what perturbs me is I see people they'll make, a, they'll make a, an appointment and they'll be late. Or just won't show up at all, or all of these pet peeves is is like you're coming at this as probably the most professional guy, level. yeah. Uh, you know, the most professional shop owner okay. that, that I know at least, and I don't know many people. Yeah, so nothing, against, nothing against uh, um, but Mundo or any of those guys. Right, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. yeah. But but you 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 on a personal it's not, level. It's not that you're yeah. more professional, but you present the whole the whole shop is presented at a higher at a high level. Okay. Not saying that y'all are better or worse, but that's right, right. That's, that's kind of it's like yeah. an aesthetic. Kind mm-hmm. of style mm-hmm. that you're putting, through, right? Thank for you sure. for that disclaimer, but yeah. and it does. It kind of gets on my nerves when I see people who don't who don't match 
your your professionalism. You know, I'm talking about customers, and I, right. that's that's like I said, that's an outsider looking in. But I'm I'm sure it bothers you, but they are the customers. But and that goes back to expectations. Yeah, mm. you know, and the, the, the people that come in, we have to deal with all walks of life, which is totally fine. I love it. Yeah, I love meeting new people. It's probably the best thing about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And hearing what stories that they do want to tell, because mm-hmm. I'm the type of person don't ask if you don't want to know the answer to. Yeah, you know, but. Yeah, the, the the whole people coming in, and canceling appointments, not showing up for appointments. You know, it's that's a pet peeve, but it kind of comes with the territory. It's like par for the course. Yeah, yeah. you know, and if if I'm if if any, me or any of the guys are really serious about get tattooing what you want to get tattooed, we'll usually take a deposit. Yeah. If we're not serious, if we don't think you're serious, we won't take a deposit. So we'll we'll a lot sometime, but we won't give sure. a whole lot sure. of you know because once you're in it for so long, you kind of know who's gonna you come and on, who's yeah. gonna who's gonna flake out. You know. Well, that's kind of that was one of the things that uh, I think we talked about one night. Yo, bro, I'm drunk out. at the bar, dog. So yeah. I want yeah. I'm like, gonna get how, this. Like this is what okay. This is a disclaimer. I'll say it for you. Don't talk to Jacob about tattoos at the bar, unless. Unless y'all have an understanding or something, because that's gotta that's gotta unless you're serious about it. Nuts. It 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 drives me past nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like insane, raging. And okay, before I get into that, there's two different conversations about tattoos yeah. at a bar with me. There's yeah. two different kinds. Mm. Okay, there's the conversation about you know what you do. Can I see some of your work? You know. Or yeah, if I'm talking to another tattoo artist different. or a friend, you know, and we're talking about tattoos that we've done, you know, we're just giving each other examples and all that, totally fine. If you want to show me some of your stuff that you've done, totally, or that you've gotten done, totally fine, you know. Completely different conversation. If you walk up to me and say, I heard you're a tattoo artist. Yes, I am. Well, let's go. Why don't you uh, go tattoo me right now? Um, <laughs> it's one o'clock in the morning, and I'm off, and the, the, the shop's closed. I'm not. I can't do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll pay you extra. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> your extra money. You could tell me a thousand dollars, and be like, "No, I'm off work. If you want to, if you want a tattoo, come and get tattooed at the shop." Yeah, and you're in a bar, so we're all been drinking. Yes, yeah. and we've been drinking, and you know, so forth and so on. We don't want to tattoo someone's been drinking as well. So, as long as they're not wasted. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's just it's like talking to a drunk person at the yeah. bar. They're they're dickheads and they're assholes. And they, they move a lot. Oh, yeah. move blood's a lot. thinner. Blood's yeah. thinner. They do bleed out a lot, and it's it's hard to keep something in when you're bleeding yeah. it back out. That's why a lot of tattoos that are faded usually they mm. were wasted when they got. Them. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, setting up an appointments at the bar. Don't do it. Don't ask me to do it. Don't want to do it. Not gonna do it. <laughs> Because because you're not going to show up. Ten times out of ten, you're not going to show up. Yeah. And then talk to me six times in a row about a tattoo that you want that you want me to do, and then the eleventh time you see me, you show me the same tattoo that you got somebody else to do yeah. after you wasted ten hours of my life talking to me about this tattoo. Yeah. And then expect me to and, be like, and you probably, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you probably you probably give some pointers and talk about techniques and and styles around it probably a little bit. Mm-hmm. But then they get it done by somebody else, and it's like you, oh, yeah. put, you actually put in time to help them in a way. Oh yeah, ask and me for my ideas consulting. of what I would yeah. do, and then I, I tell what I would do, and then the next time I see you, you take the ideas that I've given you to your artist, mm. and then they've completely butchered. <laughs> but yet it's my ideas on your arm. Thanks for giving somebody else hundreds of dollars of your mo- hundreds of dollars of your money, yeah. and wasting that's, my time for it. That's that's very relatable. I. It's really annoying. It, yeah, we're we're, in a, we're having a bitch fest right now. No, but fine. but one thing that's like really annoying to me is when I'm out somewhere, and uh, like a lot of people know me because of the food truck or or whatever. Of course. And people just come up and it's like that's they treat you as a one dimensional person. Mm-hmm. There's oh yeah, yeah there's a there's a there's a girl who comes to the bar and literally every time she sees me, which is like fifteen sixteen times in a row, it's 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 hey where's my mac and cheese. I'm like, if you ask him that one more time, or p- people that just like call me Dat Mac, hey Dat, I'm like, well, it, it gets. I understand, you know, I have to look through their probably, eyes. They don't mean anything. But. They don't mean anything. I'm just, I'm just saying that I understand that. So if somebody, if somebody just came up to you and all they ever talked about was tattoos, that would get on my nerves every day. 
Yeah, just that's I'm telling you same way. Like mm-hmm. if if you talk to somebody, and this is in general, like if somebody came up to you and just talked about running live sound, oh no, you every know, single time that they saw you, my biggest pet peeve has been uh, anytime I come across a musician that knows I uh, do sound or whatever, they want to yeah. show me their newest recording or something. Yeah, see, and, and it, we're it's at so bu- annoying. We're at a fucking show. <laughs> hey, listen to this on my phone, and I tell them no now. I don't yeah. listen. No. I was like, hey, let me show you this. No. I don't do that. Not the time or place. Like, yeah. and see, I'm trying to put myself in a situation. It's different for you. You, you're, you're the, the face of a business, you know. Like right. This. But I try to, like you were gonna yeah. say, I try to look at it through their eyes. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I've started to try to, to wrap my head around, and the thing that keeps me, without blowing up, is, tattoos are cool. Mm-hmm. Being a tattoo artist is cool. I remember before I was a tattoo artist, like. Going into a tattoo shop, I was intimidated, but it wasn't intimidated scared. It was intimidated like, these people are fucking cool. They're way too yeah. cool. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, I don't fit in, but I want to fit in real bad. And yeah. I'm not saying that everybody's like this. Or you're, but, you're not even saying you're cool. Right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not at all. But the general public... I like, beg to differ, sir. Yeah, they, they see that... And I've I've lost sight of that a long time yeah. ago just because I've been yeah. in the industry. Well, you don't so you don't long. remember how they how, you probably I mean you're a tall guy you know you're covering you're covering tattoos you own a tattoo shop that's probably for somebody who is into that mm-hmm. and is hasn't been that exposed to it yeah it's kind of almost like a meeting a celebrity kind of thing. I don't I wouldn't want to say not that, seeing you a celebrity but, but it's kind of it's kind of like that it's a weird kind of thing for him. Yeah. it's exciting it's I novel it it's, it's novel. novel yeah that's and they want to yeah. be a part of it right and so. Like you were saying, the same person comes up to you and says, where's my mac and cheese? Right. I deal with the same thing right. about talking tattoos, but they, I think generally they just want to have some kind of connection with that person individually. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that culture. Right, in that yeah. culture. And so, so it keeps me in the back of my head. I'm like, they're not trying to get on your nerves. They just want to, they want to have some well, kind of connection with They you. want to acknowledge yeah. that. They want to feel good yeah. about... Oh, I talked to the owner of Black Cadillac. I talked to Aaron at Dat Mac. I, I talked to Zebo, Zebo at, at the sound, you know, at the concert about sound. You know, if people start coming up to us uh, about this podcast every day, it's going to take a lot of joy out of it, like it took out of the food truck. Oh, no, I mean, it's it's not that it already has, but we you know, yeah. we had people approach us, and and it's always most most of it's been just hey, I listen, it's awesome, like mm-hmm. so, and we right, love, right. And we love it when y'all do that. And see, that's the thing is that you. Me personally, is it, you have to kind of keep this in you the do. back you of your to, head. You have, to, like, you have to be constantly reminded. Well, you of can't. It you can't be a dick about it because you got to understand that. Being you'd be a dick if you didn't understand what they were going. You can relate. Right. You have empathy. Right. And even yeah. as frustrating as it gets, as frustrating as it gets, you know, because it, it's literally like go out to eat. I have to talk to somebody. Yeah. Go to the the gas station. I have to talk to somebody. No, it's probably, store, it's probably every day for you, right? It's every day. Yeah. Every day. At work, after I get off. I always thought that was I would, That's why I, I wanted saw. to bring it out of you here so you can yeah. just get it all out. And it's 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 very it's flattering, but at the same time it's very It just gets old. That's all. It gets old. I mean it just yeah. gets old. You and know? It, which is fine. It's not I mean, I don't know. I'm so fucking up in the air about it, you know. You yeah. start getting me talk about it and it's like, dummy, this is what you've wanted. You wanted to be a, a good cool tattoo guy. artist. Yeah, you yeah. wanted to be, yeah. you know, somebody that people. You wanted to, you wanted notoriety for your talents, right? And then now that you have it, you're on. Well, you're bitching on a about, well, no, bitching about it. No, well, no, no, no. Now it's you, not. We're not even. It's not even the gripe that I was trying to. That we were trying to describe. We're just trying to look. Just like this is. We're trying to look behind the curtain. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's yeah. the thing. So so kind of a full circle thing is before you started. When you were talking about, you looked in there and you saw hey, all these cool, cool tattoo guys. The tattoo guys. The tattoo guys. They were cool, and you, you didn't. All you saw was the stage and the play. You didn't see behind the curtain. Right. Right. And that's that's what this conversation okay. is. Is is we're you. showing people behind the curtain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So maybe they might understand uh, the process a little better. Maybe they might understand our mindsets. And and like I mm-hmm. said, it's totally relatable. Well, it's I, not I, all it's made out to I be. I was telling my experience. Yeah, we all have our own it, gripes. Right. 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 But it is it is interesting. So. I don't think you're you're bitching or anything like that. It's literally just, hey, take a look behind the curtain. This is what it's really like, mm-hmm. you know. And I've seen it a bunch of times. I might be a little more intuitive than some, but right. you know, I've been friends with Johnny for a long time. I've seen right. it. I've, yeah. I've seen oh, it with yeah. Johnny. Like it it used to annoy me that people would <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and that's another thing. And they like, expected him don't to care. be yeah. and they, they caricaturized Oh yeah, him is like you know. I'm going down the way, you know, and uh-huh. and, and he kind of like yeah. had to play. 
Well, he, he a almost character had, he of almost himself had to take for a that, long he had time. To take and take that Johnny Johnny character and force it into Johnny Jailbird. Yeah, and he yeah, extricated for sure. it from himself. It seems mm-hmm. so. You know, I mean, that's and that's kind of an interesting thing. It's very relatable. So people see you as this one dimensional well, uh, thing, but that's we've, why we've, we're, we've we're, done a little. We've done a little bit of time. Y'all want to? Uh, you want to calm down? Take a break. We'll, we'll calm you down. We'll come back. Talk. Calm you down. Talk. Well, uh, one, the last thing I was going to say. Uh-huh. One thing. Last thing I was going to say about pet peeves and all that other stuff is, <laughs> all right, people at the bar, and I think this is the biggest frustration that I have. When you're talking to me outside of work, I'm not even going to say at the bar, just outside of work. Yeah. If I am in a conversation with somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if Very I'm, much so. If I am sitting next to my girlfriend and we are talking. Yeah. Do not Approach come you. up yeah. and just intrude the conversation right. about a tattoo. Like, that's, I think that's the, the, the biggest thing for me overall is the yeah. lack of respect that some people and that's, have. That, that's well, just, that, that's also your polite, shit customers right. that want to, like, haggle for the prices and bitch about certain things it's like it's coming back what he said is like you have this professional front y'all try really hard to be very high level and then you know people like that are assholes yeah yeah well i guess it's well it's they just don't i don't think it's not an asshole is in the sense of i'm gonna be an asshole today ignorant ignorant we would go with ignorant rather than asshole they don't intend to be assholes. they just don't think that's part of that's part of them thinking you're a one-dimensional being yeah, yeah. right oh, you, you know you're like not that guy does tattoos i'm gonna talk to him about tattoos right exactly now. Right people now. get very single singular minded and they just and I, I, I need to go talk to him about a tattoo yeah. here then yeah he's an asshole <laughs> you know but you're a person and that's just not very polite to come and interrupt your conversations and it's terrible that people don't know that well, i'm gonna interrupt y'all's conversation shut this shit down we'll take a break okay <gasps> hey guys welcome to the shill the shill portion of, the shill of, the portion episode. of this episode. Uh, if you or anyone that you know is looking to uh, spread the word on an event or a business or or an organization or an organization or anything like that, and they want to get into this this new twenty first century invention of podcasting, you could aver- you could advertise on radio or or local TV or YouTube or something like that, and you'd yeah. probably do well. But the thing is, I think our audience is a little more engaged yeah. with us on a personal level, so mm-hmm. they're probably a lot more likely to pay attention to you, whoever you are, as an advertiser. Yeah, plus we're a lot cheaper. Yeah, way cheaper, dude. Yeah, we're so. basically doing it almost for free. I mean, yeah. you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you are interested uh, in doing something like that, then hit us up at feedback at a to z podcast.com or get a hold of us at any of our other social media connections and help us pay these bills pay so these we, new bills. so we can keep doing this for free yes sir Obviously, uh, you have some some uh, gripes, but as we all do. Uh, but I guess w- one of the reasons I was telling Aaron that I wanted to have you on is because you um, you're kind of a uh, you're kind of an entrepreneur type. Like you you you're you've from what I know, you've set up this you've set up this, you've got this tattoo shop and without going into debt, without taking out these loans, mm-hmm. without, without overextending yourself, and you you've maintained it, and you've also uh, trimmed up a lot in the last few years, you know, like yep, you've yep. made, you've made like a lot of drastic changes and it's like you, you kind of reflect some kind of integrity and maybe you have something that we could talk about that. A little bit. Uh, yeah, the, the, the whole no debt thing was actually started in play when I became a tattoo artist. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said earlier, one of the things that every tattoo or most every tattoo artist wants is to own their own shop. And so when I first got into it, I would take 10% of everything I made a night and put it in an account. And that's what gave me, in my head, 10% for 10 years, you'll have enough money to make, you know, to to build your own shop the way that you want it. Right. Uh, And so that would took a little bit of, I guess, responsibility. Yeah. To not. I mean, I mean, that's a classic. That's savings, responsibility, yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and foresight. Foresight like it's, as well. It, 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 as the basic idea of it is, is not that that fucking brain brain numbing or anything. It's like not. That. It's just yeah to actually pull it off. It's, the hard part is is being a tattoo artist that just starts out and saving ten percent of everything that you do. Yeah, because you're not making very much money when you first well, started. 
Yeah, no. You talked about wanting to go and apply at Kroger, so. Well, that was because of the road construction. Oh, that's so right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's we didn't have any access. But yeah. being a tattoo artist and starting off as a tattoo artist, I have a have a guy that's going through it right now. You're living the rock star life. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, you 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 make money cash every, every night. Every day. Yeah. You, you know, you you get off between ten o'clock and twelve a.m. So you're going to go to the bar, you're going to hang out, you have people that come and talk to you, that want to talk to you, that want to associate with you, that want to be associated with you because you are in that stigma now. Yeah. And so when, in my opinion, when you first start, it's the hardest thing to do is to, to, to keep some kind of level responsible head because you can go spend $500 a night because you're like, oh, tomorrow I'll make two or three hundred of it back. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a financial pitfall. Easy. Right, because you don't, it, it facilitates your mind to not think in terms of blocks of time Oh yeah. When you're not make like teachers make money a month. They get mm-hmm. like so you really have to plan that out. Yes. And it will it will guide you in that way. But if you're making money daily, like just like a server. Man, oh, yeah. I would, well, or, I would say that, that people, anyone, people in this, a lot of people in the service industry and people we know and people whoever's listening might know. Yeah. It might even be somebody listening. I know I've done it, but people that work in the service industry, they get paid cash for gigs or whatever. Mm-hmm tend to live gig to gig. I mean, I, I kind of do as well in, in what I do. And it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, I don't know why, what that has to do with like trying to get, I don't know why it's typically not so that people in service industries are good with their money. I don't know what, I mean, mm. where, where did it come from for you? How do you learn how to not, how to not, not <laughs> spend it all, you know? Uh, I think it was just one of those goals, you know, like we were talking about earlier, you, I, I, I very, I set myself very, reachable goals mm. but not one but i spread them out so yeah, i have well, all of this time you're smart enough to give yourself time right yeah and i think that's one of my biggest attributes is is being able to set these goals realistically and keep it to where i can make sure that i accomplish those yeah um how that came about for me i have no clue yeah. i was horrible before i was a tattoo artist I had a gambling problem yeah mm. and then i got in, in you're like a, a card player or something Blackjack. Yeah, blackjack. Yeah. Blackjack was my vice. <laughs> poker, I, I could sit down at a poker table for hours and hours and hours and walk away with two, three, four, five hundred bucks. But if I go to the blackjack table, I'm either down three thousand dollars or I'm up a thousand and it was usually down three grand. Damn. Yeah, within twenty or thirty minutes. Yeah. Well I'm glad you shook that. Shook that, yeah. Uh, the car wreck, of course, put me out of commission for about a year and a half. And then that kind of led into being a tattoo artist, which led into being a manager and then owning a shop and uh, being debt free with opening own shop, that was that was that was a, that was a struggle. It was, totally. it was hard. It was hard, you know. Yeah, but, but it was important. You didn't. Oh, absolutely. Like a, it's like an uncompromising thing. You're like, and I'm, I've had I've had a hell of an accomplishment. Thank you. And I, I can't take a hundred percent credit. Uh, I did have some help. Uh, my mom. Helped me and supported me a lot. Shout um, out. Yeah, thanks, Mom. Dad, he came and we actually did all the floors at the yeah. shop. Well, no, I mean, you had help, but you didn't You didn't go out taking out a line of credit that you're paying a bank for right no. now. No, 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 no. I mean, obviously, I mean, you can't, you know, nobody can, I mean, you can start things on your own if, you, if you're lucky, but. You, mm-hmm. you know, people people help. I'm not saying you did it all on your own. But, okay. okay. But it's just the big, the big thing about, you know, saving your money and everything. It's really, it's rare. It's well, I find, yeah, I, I find that if you want to be successful, it, there's a thing, especially nowadays, and you can really tell, you look around the landscape, and almost everyone living right now has a big problem with instant gratification. Oh, yes. And it's, it's a cultural thing where, I mean, we're on our phones all the time, we're never bored, Mm-mm. you know, we have just, like, inf- infobesity, right? Oh, Every, yeah. Everything you want, you can have immediately. You can, you can have a waiter deliver you food and not have to get out of bed, you Right, so there's there's no real call to struggle, mm-hmm. in, in a lot of ways, you know, in, in call to struggle, and um, it is it's hard. But if you do that rare thing where you can stave off instant gratification, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to be successful in whatever you choose. Do you mm-hmm. think? Do you think it was the goals more? It was the go. I mean, setting the easy attainable goal seems to be the way, right? It because the it initial was. thing you said is ten percent every every. Every day. Every day, 10%. Which, in hindsight, it's not that much, but, you know, you break it down over 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like a savings account. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, You put it in your master's? Hmm? You put it in your mattress? 
No, uh, I put it in my air vent at the house. Actually, <laughs> really, whatever house I was living in, like the air vent, unscrew it, had a box, and set pretty, it in there. That's pretty clever. He has bank accounts now, so no one try to rob him. <laughs> <laughs> bank accounts in two safes. There you go. <laughs> two safes. Yeah, one at the shop, one at the house. Yeah. So you set you set that initial goal. You you, you saved up the chunk of change you needed it mm-hmm. to. Did, I guess you didn't you just basically buy Santa Fe or what was left of it? Um, the way that that all worked out. This is another one of those situations that I was put in. Yeah. Um Yeah, because you did it eight years instead of ten like you wanted, so you kinda s- no f- or five. six years. <laughs> so an opportunity presented itself and you jumped on it. Yeah. I had to kind yeah. of yeah. had to. Um the owner of the prior shop, uh seeing how he was in Alaska, you know, it was kind of out of sight, out of mind in my opinion, I could be wrong. Uh gotten a little behind on rent and all of that the way that that his dynamics worked as far as what the shop had to work out it kind of put us behind a little bit and i could kind of tell me and him have a close personal relationship uh that he was trying to trying to he's kind of over being in alaska and having four or five shops up there and then the one in here you know i could i could sense him kind of drifting away so like the the kind of the the delay on his part was probably due because he was tired of dealing with it. Basically. I wouldn't say necessarily tired of dealing with it. I think it was it was more of on his part. It was it was an it wasn't there to where he could just go and do it. He actually had to take time out of his mm. busy schedule. So it wasn't that he was getting tired of it. I just think it became more of a burden. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a hassle. Yeah, and so uh, he had wanted to get out of the lease, and so I talked to the owner of the Colonnade, and I said you know, how much does this person owe, you know, how far, how far his back is he? And he told me the number, and I said, okay, I'll call you back in a minute. So I called the owner of the shop, and I said, hey, do you want to get out of your lease? He was like, yeah. I said, well, what if I can get you out of your lease? He goes, what do you mean? I said, if I can get you out of your lease right now, Will you give me everything in the shop and give me the rights to everything in the shop, which was Santa Fe? Hmm. He goes, Jacob, if you can get me out of my lease, I will give you everything. He goes, you can have everything in the shop, the equipment. He goes, I'm just in a bond right now. I need to get out from underneath it. If you can help me out and find a way to do that, blah, 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 blah. Then it's yours. Then it's yours. Yeah. And so then I called the owner of the colonnade back and I said, you know, if I were to get Kevin to pay you everything that's owed, will you let him out of out of his lease? Mm. He goes, yeah. If you can give me that back, I'll, I'll let him out of his lease. I said, okay, well, in good measure, if I do that for you, will you allow me to rent a space for X amount of dollars a month and give me time to remodel the space and me and you can have our own, you know, contract and negotiation from it? He goes, yeah. He goes, I, uh, if you can do that, I said, okay. Said, here's a check for X amount of dollars. I want this space. I called Kevin. I said, You're out of your lease. <laughs> I get everything in the shop. And Kevin was like, Huh? I said, He's sending you over the paperwork. And then Kevin had to sign it and all of this. So the position or the opportunity presented itself and I had to jump on it. How did it, how did it, how your heart was bounding that day? I'm sure. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just because it came out of nowhere, basically. It right? came out of nowhere. Yeah, it came completely out of nowhere. That had to have been just crazy. That day had to have been crazy. Oh, it was. And it was like, okay, you know, you're doing this. Whether you think you're ready or not, you're doing this. Because it's not just about you. I had, we had four had guys, four other yeah. people at the shop. Yeah. And if yeah. I wouldn't have done it, just like when was, he asked me to be manager, yeah. 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 then the shop would have closed down. And, you know, it's also, it's it's like kind of serendipitous that you had been running the shop for as long as you had and been basically had to act as owner because the guy was so far away. Mm-hmm. So it's like he inadvertently set you up. And that's one of the, the way that I looked at it being the manager was like I told I told him, I was like, I need you to teach me, even if it's over the phone, yeah. how to do the books, you know, the paperwork, what needs to be, where I need to make the supply orders, all this stuff. And I pre pre uh I set myself up to learn all those traits going into the knowledge of knowing that I'm going to open my own business so I'll already be prepared for it. I wouldn't necessarily just be blind in it. So when it came down to do it, I knew like the basic perimeters of what I need to do to make a shop run and function, not just on paper and not just customer service wise, but practically too. also dealing with the employees and the people that work with you. You know, that's the people think that it's a tattoo shop and Oh yeah. 
It's a it's fucking soap opera. <laughs> I'm trying, to, I'm trying to hurt cats. In the just head. no. Just, I've, I've hung out with you motherfuckers. I know how y'all get. <laughs> I yeah. love my guys to death. I will yeah. do anything for them. But when it comes to getting prima donna tattoo artists to actually do fucking work, <laughs> well, they're yeah. artists. They're still artists. Absolutely. And right, artists, right. artists comes are, with are a pain in yeah. the ass. Mm-hmm. He knows. I mean, musicians the same way. Yeah, musicians right? are a pain in the ass. So yeah, it's a lot of people are like yeah. yeah. And so you have to you know find everybody's each individual personality and you have to cater to it in a way to where it doesn't aggravate anybody else's individual personality because they well, all you, but it's not even it's and it's we it's a weird thing it's not even that they're employees and you can have a good employee and a bad employee you are basically you have a collection of creative artists, minds create well creative minds but they all have their own set thing and then mm-hmm. if they if they make a splash they get in a magazine or something then that adds value it's like mm-hmm. But it's not like a, a tangible thing. No. You know? I mean, you could have one guy that just cranks them out, and that's great. Oh, yeah. But then you have one guy that's just like a hot shot. He does like one or two a month, but he charges like a shitload for it. <laughs> right, you know? Right. And it's, it's trying to find that dynamic. And, and see, probably even finding people to come in, too. Oh, yeah. That's Marketing another yeah, is another thing. Marketing is a whole other beast, yeah. It's a completely different. I mean, and I'm glad you said what you said, because I don't, I don't have employees. You can ask my guys. Like, I'm not your boss. Right, you know, I'm not. They don't, they don't work for you. They rent out your shop, basically. They they, they rent a chair, kind of, kind of, pretty much, without going into the the dynamics of it. Um, Very similar to like a, a barber shop or something. Close, yeah, yeah. close, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I, they all look at me, and they'll be like, "Oh, you're the boss." I'm like, "No, I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss. I don't want to be the boss. I'm not your boss. I don't want our relationship to be right. that yeah. because it's dealing with." The artist type people, yeah, you know, you try and you're to, one yourself too. Absolutely, so. I wouldn't want to be treated like that. It's one right, of the reasons right. why we are started tattooing, so because we don't we, we don't, don't, we don't want fucking boss. We don't want a boss, yeah. you know. And then you shove five, six people in a room with a boss that's going to be there. They, it's not going to work out. What's well, well. demoralizing and a whole lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And then you know it takes. I think it takes a special type of person to be able to 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 run just run a tattoo shop. Yeah. Because you have to have the the. Those instincts of... Like we were saying earlier, you, you had to know, balance a lot of stuff. You had yeah. to be a face of the business. You mm-hmm. had to be professional, but you also had to be realistic. You mm-hmm. know? And you have to be the one that it falls back on. Yeah. Everything falls back right. on. I've heard, you, I've heard you say that before, too. It's mm-hmm. like if, if somebody messes this up, it, it comes back to me. It comes back to me, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, it's one of those responsibilities. I love it, and I hate it. Yeah. You know, I hate it because of the fact of the stress factor, but mm-hmm. I love it because of the fact that I have a strong, a strong bond with the guys that I work with that I don't think I would ever have anywhere else in any other job. Sure. You know, and that to me in itself speaks volumes, you know, but, but so you, so you had this opportunity presented to you and you, you had, I guess you had, you had the savings built up. You could take advantage of it. I had the savings built up. And did you, did, didn't you all just, did you just shut Santa Fe down? And then how long was it for the remodel till you came back? Uh, actually, you, Santa I Fe. I don't remember that period too well. Santa Fe was still open. Yeah, it stayed open until. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And until I, I, I boarded the windows up in the space that we're at now. Uh, so no one split it in them. half, basically, right? No, it was a couple of doors down. It was okay. three doors down. How many of those tattoos? Yeah, five done? gold crazy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've done a three doors down tattoo before, haven't you? No. No. no? Damn. No. No, Maybe I start a little too. Let's, late, uh, hey, hey, man, let's after this, let's go get a three doors down tattoo, bro. No, that'd be tough. Okay, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get a kryptonite rock right now. Here. See, we're doing <laughs> one of those pet peeves now. We're talking about getting tattoos. We're never gonna get. It. <laughs> That's a little practical application <laughs> for you. <laughs> so, so you, you started remodeling the other place, and and you know, even then, I guess you you did a lot of the work yourself, right? Because it looks really good. I don't know if you go to the website, check out the pictures, and it's it's like it's kind of kind of a not diner, but like it's it has like a fifties kind of. It's got a, it's black got a little, steel with black checkerboard. Steel. It, has a, it has a minimalistic yeah, sort of feel. Yeah, but it's kind of a retro it, kind of look, yeah. too. Uh, yeah, and that's one of the things that I tried to do when I was designing, because I drew the blueprints up and everything myself as far as every, where everything wanted to go. But the, the color scheme and everything that I wanted to stick to, I wanted it to be open and clean. Yeah. Um, but I tried to mix a little bit of the old school tattoo shop with more of a modern tattoo shop. Right. And It's classy. I, I, thank you. Thank you. That's what I was trying to go for because, it was, you know, it's aesthetically pleasing and that's what gives it some of the characteristics that y'all were talking about earlier right. is, yeah. right. you know, that, that certain standard, that, that upper level 
of of business and I mean, quality. You, you and feel it. You feel it when you sit in those chairs. Those very very expensive chairs. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk about those chairs. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you do. Like you feel it. it, it a lot of this stuff. In so that you shop. got you got all the shit in the shop. How much of it did you keep <laughs> from the original shop? Yeah. I kept probably just supplies, huh? <laughs> no, no, because uh, we switched over to disposable. Uh, okay. The uh, other yeah. shop was uh, had autoclaves and oh, so uh, you had to clean everything. You had to clean everything. You have to have a red room and all right, that other stuff. Right, we right. switched over to disposable, so I didn't even use supplies. I think I kept a computer, <laughs> a thermograph, which that's the thing that makes the stencil. Yeah, and I think that's it. You sell everything else off again? Ink. Yeah, I probably. put it. Uh, ink, yeah. Yeah, you kept all the ink. Inks and, and some needles. Inventory, yeah. Um, yeah, put it in storage room. Ended up selling the storage locker for pennies on the dollar for what I paid for it. But, <laughs> you know, had to but, get out from underneath But so you had, you had your shop now. So I did. And, and I mean, you. I mean, it was probably exciting and you were very, you were probably proud of yourself and all that. But it was also, I mean, did it kind of. It was an exciting time. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Well, the videos you, you came opened, out with. Yeah, you had the little video, the trailer, great, teaser trailer. Great teaser trailer. You know? teaser, a couple yeah. of them, yeah. 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 Every, man, like, everybody, like, I was hype on it. Eh? Everybody yeah. was talking about it. It was, it was, it was hype, dude. You did, it was definitely hype. And see, approach. that's, that's back to the, the, the marketing thing that we were touching on earlier. It's one of the things that I have to get back into. You know, right. now that we're busy, we're about three years in. And I mean, it's, Especially this time of year, we're yeah. Busy. This is this is busy season. This yes. is this is tax returns. Yeah, I haven't had a season. day off in a month. This is Damn. the busiest season for tattoos, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. March March is always the busiest month of the year, and so you have March, and then like December and January, are the slowest, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, you have March, April, May, and they'll kind of slowly decline. <laughs> June and July, beginning of June, it's summertime. Everybody's getting out of school. They're going yeah. on vacation, so it kind of slows down a little Does bit. It? Yeah. End of June, early July, we'll kind of pick back up. Then you have July 4th. That'll knock it down. And so it kind of just mm. goes in waves. But March, April, May, I mean, they're I just... I hope people don't get tattooed and then go to the beach right afterwards. I hope they don't do oh, that. Now you're getting back summer. on pet peeve things. Yeah. I thought we were off of that. All right, yeah, we off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's, anyway. So now, I mean, I guess it, I guess it, probably, uh, it probably really, like, solidified, I guess, your view to uh, how you run your finances and take care of things like that. Yes, right? Yes. You haven't you haven't done any too nothing too major expansion wise, but not yet. That's all in in in. You're in actually the you're ahead of your goals at this point. So. Yes, <laughs> yes. Four ahead years ahead. Four, four years, years ahead. ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Four years ahead of that. But it's 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 definitely given me more financial responsibility yeah. because once again, I don't want the shop to be a four, five, six year shop. I want it to be twenty years down the road. The right. shop's still there. So, in order to set up for that, you have to take into consideration yeah. that there's going to be hard times. There's going to be slow Absolutely, times. Absolutely. Yeah. So, therefore, so you plan on staying in the Beaumont area? This shop, I plan on staying, keeping this shop open as long as as I can. And you also yeah. have to, I mean, not just not just a tattoo apprentice, but now you have to find someone to make them kind of like the business apprentice. Yeah. I'm working on one. No. Yeah. I'm working <laughs> so. on one one particular person. It's it's going to be the way the rate that it's going now. It's going to be a couple of years before some of the keys start getting released and yeah, more of the information. Yeah. You know, and it's, it is what it is. I'm not ready to. Yeah, I'm just speaking vaguely. You know, yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know, but that's, kinda, that's you, the end you goal kinda, is to you, you kind of turn into a little you know, entrepreneur. Try to chill out a little bit. That's right? that's <laughs> what I'm heading for. Is you know I, I plan on opening another business, and then by the, by the time I'm 35, and then another business by the time I'm 40. So, but tattooing is always going to come first, right? Like, I'll never stop tattooing. It's what got me to where I am now, and hopefully where I want to be in the future. And I say hopefully because anything it's can been, happen. It's been very satisfying seeing you evolve as well. Oh yeah, for the years that that, oh, that I've known you, you, you know because. I don't know if y'all remember. I don't know if y'all remember uh, fluffy, fluffy boy with fluffy. the, we'll, we'll with the backwards up. fitted caps and the. Up. Oh, y'all can put some photos. <laughs> the, the backwards <laughs> fitted caps and then the chino shorts and the Chuck Taylors every day to work. You yeah, know? Roly, one of the guys that works for me, he refers to him as Big Jacob. Big, <laughs> and he that tells guy. me he misses oh, yeah, Big that, Jacob. That's Big Jacob. Yeah, I miss every, Big Jacob. Yeah, every day. Same guy. Same guy. Same guy. I, don't know, I like I like stylish. Jacob. I like stylish Jacob. He's yeah, he's, like stylish he's, Jacob. he's much more pleasing on the eye. Right? <laughs> Very pleasing on the eye. But <laughs> we need it. We need it. That's another thing. We need to get you like doing a, a fashion segment, maybe like once a month or something, because yeah. you you're so god dang fashionable. Oh whatever. Yeah. You know. I mean, so I can. He does, it's easy on him. You see. Like, yeah. 
Like, well, I like, mean, okay, so hey, we're man, not, like, I'll bring back an old right phrase. Now. We're not trying to butter your balls, okay? Yeah. Okay. We're yeah. not trying but, to butter but, your balls. But, I mean, that's really one of the reasons, <laughs> one of the big reasons I wanted to have you on, and I wanted to have you on, we, we've been trying to get you on for a while. Yeah. Is because I do apologize. You, no, it's totally fine. You are, you have a lot of integrity. You're a nice guy. Not trying to butter your balls. And and you've, you've, you've done things so uh, well with your finances, with the shop. Like all those qualities, and then like also your transformation from mm-hmm. what you used to be, what you are now. Like it's just, it's. Uh, I wouldn't say inspi- you're not very inspiring. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean it's 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 admirable. That's what we want to have you on talking. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Because because maybe maybe we could glean some like knowledge from you. That's really it. It's like talk about what you did, and because you you've made a change, and and those kind of changes aren't something. That just happened. Like you, you've you've put you've worked your ass off. I have, and that's yeah. that's something that I I I wanted. I guess we wanted to share about you. That's why we wanted to have you on. Is to share, well, uh, just share the story. Share well, share the story and share just you know you're an example of what you can do if you put your mind to something. Absolutely, and do shit right. Absolutely. And if, and if you don't take the bait, if you don't take the low hanging fruit. No, I, no, you know, don't. That's that's what it is. That's you why, can look at it. I mean, that's why you're successful. Honestly, it's it's because you have patience. I can guarantee you right now that's number one. I mean, you you're talented. You're a talented person, but there is a there's lot more, more to, to be just said. Being talented. Yeah, there's a lot more to be said for somebody who has patience mm-hmm. and, and you know, and somebody who grinds. Mm-hmm. Like a grinder will always beat a hustler. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. And that's what you've been doing. And that's thing. That's why you're successful. Well, and you know, I, once again, I was thinking about this in in the shower. Not to you're thinking about us in the shower. Hey man, it's hot I knew you. I know. There you go. Mm-hmm. But I'm blushing. One of the things that <laughs> that is as stupid and as idiotic as, as it sound as it sounds, I saw a a photo. It was probably six, seven years ago. Yeah. And it had it was like Egyptian times, and there was two of them. There was one on top of the other, and it had like this leader or pharaoh or whatever, and like all the guys were carrying him on his back, and he was pointing. Mm-hmm. And then on the bottom one. It was him, and he had straps on his back, and he was pulling all of his followers or, you know, all of his people. Right, he was right. pulling them on his back. And it said something along the lines of, don't lead by – don't lead by – or lead by example. Don't lead by – by, I don't know, whatever it said. But yeah. basically the thing that I got out of it is do the work yourself – Instead of trying to get everybody else to do it for you. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want somebody to see what you're doing, you're going to have to show them by doing it. You can't just show them by by pointing and telling them and saying, hey, you got to go do this, you got to go do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Just for one, people don't like being told what to do. No. That's that's extreme ownership, too. And then that that will seep into them uh, doing it terribly. And then you'll Mm -hmm. bitch at them, and then they'll get... Pissed, and then that's just the, the deadly cycle of the managerial right. workspace. And, and that's that's managers. The managers is a recent invention. Yeah, very like much. The so. corporate structure was invented in like the twenties and thirties with railroad commissions and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Like corporate culture is a new thing, and it obviously doesn't work because people are miserable. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that's. I mean that's y'all probably you enjoy your life. I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you don't have a boss, and and you started no. as a tattoo artist, and I know a mm-hmm. lot of tattoo artists, and they they love what they do. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and they're their own bosses, pretty much. It's For like, sure. There's something to that. That's why I don't want to get a real job. I don't either, man. It's at yeah. all. Don't three you know. three people, and I'd know. rather. I mean, I'm broke, but I'd rather yeah. be broke than broke have and to, happy. Have yeah. to do that. All that well, and that's what got me into tattooing in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you used to you used to do you used to be miserable production specialist yeah. for an oil spectrum, company, right? You that's know, one thing that you and I have in common is where we. Where we used to be, we've had these conversations before. Mm-hmm. Where we used to work for oil companies and how soulless and miserable it oh, was. Man. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't enjoy a weekend. I was in the because plants for a year. It was terrible. Seven twelves for a year. Seven twelves. Mm-hmm. I couldn't enjoy a weekend because I had to go back to the damn job. Yeah. I'm like, I don't yeah. want to do this. This isn't. I've been dead yeah. twice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not yeah. gonna waste my life. I can be home, going home today, and getting a wreck and just be dead. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. My life is. You've been working for someone else. The daily yeah. grind. Right, yeah. right. You've I'm going to get in my company truck and drive around and go back in my office and then sit here and do literally 30, 45 minutes worth of work and not be happy. It sucks. Yeah. It, it really that, And that really sucks because you feel like a tool in a drawer, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's really what you feel like. Like when you have a job like that, that you only do it for the money, mm-hmm. you, don't really, you don't really enjoy 
anything out of it. You don't feel a connection to you know your mm, labor like a or period your product. of soullessness. Yeah, and you don't uh, enjoy the time for, off for that you cash. have, right? Yeah. Because you're thinking about having to go back to that damn place. Like, yeah. I don't want to fucking go back there. And yeah, you're so tired from being there and worn out and stressed mm-hmm. mentally that you just want to stay at home all day. And then you don't do anything in your day at all. Mm-hmm. Then you're miserable because you didn't do anything. It's, like I said, it's a fucking endless cycle and it's a new <laughs> invention. But I mean, you know, and also the other thing is some people would say that you're one of the lucky ones that got out of the gig economy and made something bigger. But it's not luck. It's it's because... No, it's foresight. It's it foresight, foresight and it's because yeah. of your patience and all that stuff. You know, it's... You know, like we're both broke. Luck doesn't. We're technically. Actually, I mean, I guess you could call us unemployed, even, and we're doing this fucking podcast. But like, yeah, we're not real. We don't. We don't have real jobs. But you know, we have I've kicks. had a real we job. Have, we have goals and we in plan like five and we build years. up toward them. Mm-hmm. You know? And we 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 are pretty good at attaining them. You fucking started a food truck. I'm going. Yeah. I'm going on the road. Like it's persistence. Yeah, it's being persistent. Plus, being right. being broke isn't that bad for a little while. No, it makes you hungry. It makes you hungry. And see, here's well, the other I'm thing. I've been on, you know, <laughs> I've been broke of the broke before. Right. Like, before I was... Sleeping in the car. You've been, you've, been, you've been worse than broke. You've been in debt, right? No. You've never been in debt? Never ever? been in debt. Debt. Debt sucks. I don't think it's as bad as being oh, broke. Okay. Yeah. No, I've been broke. Debt. Like, eating half a bag of ramens because I have to eat the other half oh, tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, broke. But at the same time, I was happy. Yeah. You know? Not in like I'm happy with who I am or where I am, st- my status, yeah. you know, but I didn't have a, as much stress and stuff, yeah. you know. And now, you know, I do well, yeah, you know, but now there's more, there's different kinds of stress. Oh, you know? right. Everybody right. I mean, here, more, you're, more you're, money, more problems. You're technically, you're probably work every day. No money, no yes. problems. Yeah. At minimum. I mean, if you're not, even at if I'm work, not at work, you're taking phone work. calls and answering emails. And yes. Because you own a business, that's kind of the yes. that's the other flip side too. Mm-hmm. Now, but now you're working for yourself. Even uh, on you, Sundays, you you're, would still you're, be you're your own thinking. master, man. Um, yeah. I was there. I was tattooing yesterday. Oh, were you? Huh. Oh, yeah, on like, Sunday. I have I haven't had a day off in a month. I've been at the shop every day this month, tattooing five to seven hours a day, grinding. Yeah, yeah. But you got to. Yeah, you got to. And it works both ways, you know. If if I'm doing that, the whole lead by example thing. If my guys come in on their two days off and they're like, don't want to do anything, well, and I'm like, every day too. Hey, come on. I've been here every right, right. day. You know, snap out of it. I know you had your two days off, but it's time to get to work. Like, you came here to work. If you're not going to work, then go home and come back when you want to work. You yeah. know, you're not fired. You're not. Right, right. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's another subject. Yeah. Well, shit. I'm going to just wrap it up on I, a great. I think so, man. <laughs> <Nope. laughs> Well, yeah. dude, Jacob, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, for sure. Jacob uh, Smith, Black Cadillac, uh, Black Cadillac Tattoo Parlor. Do uh, you got any events or anything y'all have coming up? Any, any, any anything you want to deal specials? Oh. Anything like that? No, not off the top of my head. I mean, like we're in the middle of busy season, so yeah. So it's trying to get back into that. I'm pretty sure come June or July we'll be doing something. Okay. Yeah. Some kind of customer appreciation. Y'all ever gonna have this dude back in, or any musical artists or anything like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometime this summer, Sometime. we'll have somebody. And did you in wear there. article of clothing for each guest we had today? Yes, I did. <laughs> all right, guys, that's been A to Z with, with Jacob Smith. Uh, we're going to put all the links and everything for, for everything on the website. Follow them on Facebook, y'all on Instagram, too. Uh, yeah. Instagram, yeah. Black Hat. Take your got dang parlor. tax return up there and go get yourself yeah. a tattoo. Go tattoo. check them out. Check out their work. They got a lot of great artists. And uh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Man, Zach, that was that was a good episode. I really liked that one, dude. Heck yeah. Yeah, it it's it doesn't really matter that, that Jacob's our good friend that we see all the time. I think even if we would have known him, it would have been great. I think so too. He's we learned we learned some new stuff about him. We learned some new stuff about the industry. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was it was it was a good educational time. Yeah. <laughs> and shout out to uh, Silas Feenster for providing the music for it as well. Yeah, thanks, buddy. We appreciate you. Like like we said in the beginning, if if you like his music, you can you can look him up on Bandcamp, buy a couple songs, support mm-hmm. him any way you want. We also want to say we got a bunch of stuff coming coming down the line. Yeah, this uh, month particularly. This month we have uh, Steve Fitzner's episodes coming out. Yeah, uh, that got, one's gonna be really fun. We're gonna talk about like neurologically atypical behavior. Uh-huh. We got Tyler stuff. Troutman, who is the precinct chair of the Hardin County Republican Party. Yeah, we're gonna talk about why Republican isn't a bad word. We drink a lot of gentlemen, Jack. Yeah, we and did. And then we we have another movie night coming out. Well, I don't want to give it away just yet. We got a couple of those coming out. So and then great. also Arlie Hammonds. We got uh, Mr. Gated Country, Mr. Wild Man himself. Yeah. But that along with some other guy, other stuff. So so keep your ear to the ground. Be ready. 
And uh, I don't know, man. What what else we gotta say? We love you. I'm I'm not there yet, but you know what? I really do appreciate you guys for sticking Tell around. Tell them you love long. them, Aaron. It. I have a hard time with that. Tell them you love them, Aaron. I really enjoy you guys a lot, and I care about you. Well, this has been A to Z, uh, episode 21 with Jacob Smith. Uh, uh, I guess maybe we'll have to get a psychologist. If anybody knows any psychologists, we can get in here to talk to Aaron about his issues, and uh, that would be great. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, guys.